I am Adil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand what is after all Bernoulli's trial. Well, I am not a professor and I am having a difficult time myself to understand this concept. So what I have done here is that I have just copied the best possible definition from the book and as I understand, I hope it will make your job of understanding the same a bit simpler. So that is the whole idea of this particular video. So let's read the definition and understand each and every term. This might take a bit longer this time. The question here is understanding Bernoulli's trials. Trials of random probability experiment are called Bernoulli's trials if they satisfy following conditions. So there are four conditions given in most of the books. These are, there are finite number of trials. The trials should be independent. Each trial has only two outcomes, success or failure. And the fourth one is, the probability of success remains the same in each trial. So if any experiment, which is a probability experiment, all these four conditions are satisfied, we say it meets the criteria for Bernoulli's trials. Now based on this, we'll be working on distribution and so many things. So it becomes very important for us to understand this concept, right? So let's try to figure out each term. The first term itself is what is a trial, right? So the word here is trials of random probability experiment, right? So that means trial is basically a repetition of an experiment. So let me just qualify the first word here, which is trials. So what do I understand from this is it is repetition of experiment. of experiment. So in our case, uh, we are talking about a probability experiment. So you can also watch my video on probability experiment where we have given what is a random probability experiment, right? So, so basically repetition of an experiment uh, which is we say well defined, right? And uh, we say equally likely outcomes. So we will not elaborate much on this. You can actually go to my video on random probability experiment and understand all those terms and then come back here, right? So trials is repetition of an experiment. Since the experiment is well defined, you can actually do it over and over again, right? The first point here is there are finite number of trials. So we will give this a number. Let us say the number is n. So n times we are doing an experiment. That is what we are trying to say here. Now, second is the trials should be independent. Now, what does that mean? The trial should be independent. Now, independent really means that every time you do the experiment, you get the same likelihood of the results, right? That is what I think we mean by independent here, right? So, for example, what is not independent? Let's look into that. Let's say I have a bag. In this bag, I have some some kind of balls, right? So we have few red balls. Okay, let me R uh, and some blue balls, right? Okay. So so let me make some blue balls more four. Okay. So we have seven balls in this bag, and I randomly throw my hand and pick up a ball from this bag. Now I could pick up red or blue. It's equally likely to pick up any one of these, right? So in the first trial, trial is a repetition of experiments, correct? So my experiment is to grab a ball from this bag at random, right? So that becomes a random probability experiment. So when I pick up a ball, let us say it is red, okay? Okay, and then I see, observe, that is measurement. So whenever you do a trial, we have outcomes and these outcomes could be measured. So in the first pick, let us say I got a red ball. Now, I could replace the red ball and pick the next or I may just keep the red ball and pick the next. Here is the difference. If I replace, then the next pick has same probability. We have exactly the same thing to pick from. Conditions are not changed. We say that is independent. So, so in this particular say, thing, what we see is if we do replacement, then it becomes independent event. Do you see that? But if we do not replace, 
in that case the condition changes the probability of picking up the ball will be different the experiment is different we don't have now three red and four balls we already picked up a ball so we have we are working with six balls do you understand so it becomes a different experiment right so the trial will have a different kind of an output right it will not be as we started with so what we have to do is we have to restore the conditions to initial conditions so let me write down here so when we repeat the performance we need to restore initial conditions of the experiment and then do the next trial that is what it means so let's get back to this so there are a finite number of trials and the trials should be independent that means when you perform the next trial the conditions should be same as it was for the first trial or the earlier trials then it becomes independent of the previous one then the previous one is not going to influence the results of coming trials that's the whole idea okay so i hope these two points are clear to you next we have each trial has only two outcomes success or failure well, this point is kind of simple if you are working with tossing a coin, right? Or you say winning or losing. Well, what happens when I throw a die? So when I throw a die, the outcomes could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Does it mean that we cannot have that as our Bernoulli's trials? This is something to think about. So we say each trial has only two outcomes, success or failure. This has six outcomes and all are equally likely, right? What is the probability of getting six? Well, the probability of getting six is one out of six since all are equally likely. There are six numbers and picking up one or the die falling with the face on top with number six is one out of six. Now, that is not success or failure then how do we make this experiment a Bernoulli's experiment or Bernoulli's trials? That is critical to understand. So here we take help of a very important concept and that is random variable. Do you understand? So random variable. So whenever we have an event, right, in that case, in our probability experiment, we are trying to look for a result. That result should have success or failure, right? So we define a random variable so that we could record our outcomes in a way what we are looking for. Let us say in this case, I define a random variable, which normally will be done by letter, capital letter. And let's say this random variable is the, we are looking for six, right? Just the number six. We are looking for the number six. We are saying that if we get six, it is a success, right? So I should write actually event. So event is the number, number six, right? That is the event. And the variable which measures this event will be x of a will be the success of getting the number six. Now, do you see all of a sudden, we have an experiment where we have six different outputs, but since we defined our event to be looking for number six. So if you get six, so if I throw a die, so getting six will be treated as success. Do you see that? Success. And the possibility of that is one out of six. So we say probability of this event x small x, which we'll say is equals to one out of six. And here we also have a failure. What is a failure? Five out of six. Do you understand? So of not getting six, that is the failure, right? So the failure is, uh, let's say, not getting six. So let me write this as a complement of this. For the time being, five out of six. Is it okay? So that becomes success and failure. So likewise, as you have seen, we could have experiments which are not clearly defined as success and failure, but then you can define your events. So the idea here is that you have to look for events which could 
qualify the experiment for Bernoulli's trials at times, right? So that could be a big question at times. So in this case, success and failure is what we're looking for. So we say, well, if the number is six, it is success. If it is not six, it is failure. Now in most of the experiments, we'll define a variable to success, which is P, and variable to failure, which is Q. And obviously they are related, right? P plus Q, have to be 1, right? So we know in this case, uh, let me write down here, P plus Q will always be 1, or you can say Q will be, that is failure, will be 1 minus success. I mean, sorry, 1 minus success. Is that okay? So likewise, we have these two things related with this. I hope you, I hope you understood this. Each trial has only two outcomes. That means if I say, I'm performing this experiment of throwing a die recording six numbers, I could treat this as an experiment with an event of getting a 6 or not getting a 6. So it becomes a Bernoulli's trial, okay? Next one is, the probability of success remains the same in each trial. Now if I perform this experiment over and over, let's say 20 times, we know the probability, so we are always talking about theoretical probability, okay? So the probability of getting six is one over six in each and every trial. Is that okay? So that is how it works. So Bernoulli's trial, I hope the concept is clear to you. One, we have an experiment whose output could only be success and failure. Now any experiment could be actually treated as a Bernoulli's experiment or any trial can be treated as a Bernoulli's trial provided you could meet these criteria, and they are not difficult to meet. Do you understand? So, so the questions here onwards, where we are going to look into, will be uh, on distributions where the experiments will have to be defined so that you get output as success or failure, and then use some uh, mathematical formulas which are easy to apply and get the probability. I'm Anil Kumar. In this video, I hope you understand the very basic concept We'll elaborate more on this later in working with binomial distribution, right? So I hope this gives you a basic concept. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.